you're either a slow metabolizer or you're a fast metabolizer. If you are a slow metabolizer, caffeine is brutal on you and it sucks and you don't feel good on it and you don't like it. And it keeps you up all night and it gives you heart palpitations and it can raise your blood pressure. I don't know what you are without running a genetic test on you. I'll give you some indicators here in a second, but just know that I am a fast metabolizer. So I am speaking from fast metabolism, uh, caffeine that is. I am a fast caffeine metabolizer. So I can pound it. I can drink the stuff all day long. I can drink it right now in the e afternoon, evening. I can drink coffee and I can still go to sleep. Now my sleep might be slightly disrupted and I'm gonna share some data on that. It might be severely dis disrupted actually, but I track my sleep and I can tell you that I drink coffee up till 5 p.m. And my sleep, some of those nights is a mess and some of those nights is amazing. So I, I really don't know, but thank God this herb is my BFF. I drink it black. I don't put anything in it. You bind up the polyphenols when you put cream or milk in it. You guys can debate amongst yourselves what you want to do. Don't ask me. Um, I do actually like a little sugar in it because I do like a little sugar in the morning. That is me. I'm not going to get into that here. I have tracked my blood sugars with a continuous glucose monitor off and on for years, and I tend to run way too low. Now, we can come up with a million reasons why that is, and I don't need anybody's health advice, but I will tell you that a little bit of sugar in the morning helps me tremendously. Movement, sunlight, and a little bit of sugar in my coffee. So I do put a little bit of sugar in my black coffee and it's just enough to get me going. I will tell you though, I, there was the summer of 95 when I graduated from college and I was dating a boy who worked at Starbucks. And I think that was the year that the Frappuccino came out or just soon after. And he would give me these, I'd go see him every day, downtown Portland, and he would give me a giant Frappuccino and I got so fat that summer, <laughs> I just ballooned up. So I will tell you, those of you who think I'm talking about your, you know, super dairy, super sugary, super four pumps of vanilla, whatever, blah, blah, double half calf, latte, triple foam, pumpkin spice, whatever. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a black coffee, hot water extraction from a bean. That's it. I don't put anything in it besides sometimes, maybe a couple times a week, I'll throw a little bit of sugar in there. I'm talking a little bit, like a sprinkle. Um, I don't ever put anything else in it. So that's just what I do. That's what I suggest to people. Again, I'm not your doctor. If you're a slow metabolizer, maybe sign off now because you're not going to be able to process coffee or caffeine very well. And here are some of the things to look for if you are. Anxiety, insomnia, increased blood pressure, heart palpitations, um, even a morning cup can totally destroy your sleep. You may get jittery, anxious, or have racing thoughts. You're more prone to crashing headaches and adrenal fatigue, maybe potentially. These are just some signs. If you're a fast metabolizer, you can drink coffee at 5 p.m. and still sleep fine. Hallelujah. Coffee gives you energy, but not anxiety. You feel the mental and physical boost without side effects. I do get a little, I can, I can get a little amped up if I drink too much coffee in the morning too fast. It kind of depends though. If I'm left alone and I can just sort out my morning on my own, I'm fine. If people start blowing up my phone like they usually do, I tend to get a little anxious and it can send me over the edge. My husband, I will tell you, we completely cleared his high blood pressure with good lifestyle. Um, go back, I've got multiple episodes on cardiovascular health, high blood pressure, all of that on this podcast. You can actually just go to drtina.com, click on the podcast tab at the top. That will take you to a page that's AI driven. All you have to do is they're categorized there. I don't know if the cardiovascular episodes are all categorized there, but all you have to do is type in a word into that search tool right there. And it will give you every episode where I mention a, the word you're looking for or the topic you're looking for. So please go back and check those out because there's some oldies, but goodies in there. And we covered the gamut. Um, he, that said, we got his blood pressure under control. Naturally, he can pound coffee now. Like really, I, he was not a big coffee drinker when I met him. He'd have, a, he'd have some, but like we really do it up in the morning. <laughs> we probably go through over the course of a day. I would have to ask him cause he's the coffee maker. We probably do like three or four French press, the big French press. We, we go through three together in the morning and then we'll probably sip on another throughout the day. So I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, <laughs> but I love it. I freaking love it. 
I am excited to go to bed at night for a couple reasons. One is I love climbing into my soft sheets and cuddling with my dog and my husband. And two is that I get to wake up in the morning and have coffee. Like I know that I get to wake up in the morning and have coffee. And so I'm really excited to go to bed at night. It's, I, I, it's crazy, I know. And if any of you out there make a coffee essential oil, I feel like that would be the best mood booster. I would love a bottle of it. I'll buy it from you. All right, so... A 2023 study found that slow metabolizers actually had increased risk of kidney dysfunction and cardiovascular events with high coffee intake, um, where fast metabolizers saw benefits. So that's my disclaimer, all right? If you are a slow metabolizer, then this information is not for you, and you might want to sign off or just listen with a grain of salt and know that you have a different genetic makeup and it might impact you differently. Okay. Okay. Let's jump into some of the beauty here. I got to keep my notes straight. I should write a book about this. <laughs> there is a wild card here for us menopausal ladies and perimenopausal ladies. Estrogen declines in perimenopause, obviously, in menopause, and caffeine sensitivity can increase because estrogen upregulates cytochrome P1A2, which is the enzyme that helps you metabolize the caffeine. And so when you're losing your estrogen, that upregulation isn't happening and you are clearing caffeine more slowly. So you might have more intense effects from coffee and caffeine. So for you peri and menopausal ladies out there, just just know that that morning cup of coffee may hit a little bit harder. And this is, you know, everything hits harder. So isn't it fun? <laughs> but knowing what your dose is, think of it like an herb. Okay. I'm going to keep referencing back to that. This is herbal medicine, in my opinion. Think of your dose and your timing. And don't just listen to all the 25 year old and 35 year old bro science guys that are telling you to pound it because that may not be so good for you. You can try decaf. There's a lot of benefits with decaf and a lot of these studies, I'm not going to break every one of them down, but in many of them, they looked at caffeine and, or I'm sorry, regular coffee and decaffeinated coffee. Just make sure that you get the Swiss water processed decaffeinated and not the, I believe it's what formaldehyde that they decaffeinate with. So you still get the polyphenols, the gut perks, you know, the longevity benefits that we're going to talk about with decaf. You just don't get the caffeine. Again, some of these benefits are strictly from the caffeine and I'll try to, um, let you know which is where. And then know that cold brew as a way of making coffee might be a smoother, lower acid experience for you. So it might be less sensitive or less irritating on sensitive guts uh, and nervous system. So that's an option there too. A 2024 study in the Journal of Nutrients suggests that light roast coffee consumption may lead to beneficial changes in body composition. So that's a winner, specifically a decrease in body fat and an increase in muscle mass, particularly in overweight or obese individuals. The study found that light roast coffee, which contains more polyphenols and caffeine than regular roast, resulted in slightly greater improvements in body composition. So that's cool. It was a controlled and blind crossover study. It's worth noting the micronutrient content of coffee. It contains B2, B5, manganese, potassium, and trace minerals. So it's truly herbal medicine, in my opinion. It has been shown to positively influence the gut microbiome. It shifts it and it helps increase numbers of specific bacterium that are beneficial. So, you know, everything we put in our mouth is information for our gut microbiome. And so we're, we see a specific shift with the intake of coffee, including decaf, like I said. The, this specific bacterium thrives in the presence of coffee, even when caffeine is removed, suggesting that other compounds in the coffee, like the polyphenols, may play a role. Again, this takes us back to that herbal medicine concept. Um, the study analysis also included more than 54,000 metagenomic samples from public sources, including healthy individuals, non-westernized individuals, newborns and infants, ancient microbiome samples, and non-human primates and individuals with a specific disease. So it was a really interesting study. The findings revealed a strong correlation between coffee intake and gut microbiota composition across different study populations. And the gut microbiota exhibited distinct compositions in the coffee drinkers compared to the non-drinkers with a modest effect on differentiating the level of coffee drinking. So in general, coffee showed stimulatory rather than inhibitory effects on the abundance of gut microbiome uh, species. That's great. We want a more diverse, um, in the gut, we want a lot of diversity that is correlated with better health. The strongest association of coffee intake was observed with the abundance of gram-positive bacterium, uh, Lacinibacter 
asacrolytis, lyticus, asacrolyticus. This association remained the same for both decaf and caffeinated coffee. So pretty cool and good information. There are, there's a compound in coffee called chlorogenic acid, and it is one of the main polyphenols in coffee. Gut microorganisms metabolize it to caffeic acid, quinic acid, and several other metabolites. Gut microorganisms responsible for this biotransformation um, include several of the, the microbiota that we know in the gut. So just know that the gut microbiomes take the things that you ingest and turn them into something else or use them or help your body use them. And so this is why diversity is important. And then this um, chlorogenic acid is pretty cool. It does a bunch of cool stuff in the body. Moderate caffeine intake, two to 300 milligrams a day. So three, about three cups a day. I like to just roughly think of a cup of coffee as having a hundred milligrams. That's a good kind of, you know, barometer, if you will. Two to 300 milligrams a day, so three cups a day, is linked to a 48% lower risk of new onset cardiometabolic multimorbidity. This was in half a million participants, age 37 to 73, over an 11 year period. They also found that moderate caffeine intake was linked to lower levels of low density lipoproteins. This was from, this caffeine was from coffee and tea. So this was not just specific to coffee. This was caffeine intake. So that's pretty cool. Um, coffee and breakfast. There was a study that showed that coffee before breakfast gives you a larger blood sugar spike with your breakfast. Make of that what you will. I drink my coffee right when I wake up. First thing. I don't do any of this Huberman wait 90 minutes nonsense. I drink it right away. I don't know where he came up with that. I'm sure he has data surrounding it. Whatever. I literally wake up excited to drink coffee. That's like one of the main reasons I get out of bed in the morning. (laughs) 